Hey, this is my light painting tutorial for Adobe Photoshop. So what you need to do is open a, uh, an original photograph that you have of your own, or you can just open up a plain background and work on that uh, way. You'll need to have, during the course of this tutorial, the brush palette open, you'll need to have the paths palette open, you'll need to have the layers palette open. So I've got mine open, ready to go. The first thing that you need to do with your layers palette open if you haven't got it open, it will be in the window drop down menu. So in Windows, there is your layers palette. Click to open. You then need to create a new layer on top of the layer that you're on at the moment. So we are now working above the photograph, which means that anything that we do, we can always delete or remove, and it's not going permanently onto the background. So the first thing that you need to do for this tutorial is to draw a path with which to make make your kind of light painting. So think carefully about what you want to do. Uh, collect the pen tool. I'm just using the freeform pen tool because it's a bit more freehand. Um, but if you're somebody that likes to be a bit more precise, you might try working with the usual pen tool. So I'm going to use the freeform pen tool. And all I'm going to do is just have a little go, creating some kind of light swirls. Um, think about the sort of composition that I want doesn't really matter um, because this is just a little tutorial giving us a, a go to see uh, what the effects are and can be so it's not really something that we need to worry about too much so just have a little play around till you're happy with your um, image so I'm just going to leave it something like that um, at the moment we're not too fussed about that um, once you've done your lines, you are then going to go to the brush tool here, click on the brush tool, and then look into your brush presets um, down here. We want to make sure that our brush is set to 100%, the flow is 100%, and this is our normal. I've got my brush size to 26. It's up to you how big you have your brush size. It will also depend on how big your photo is that you're working with. Um, we're just going to go into the brush, brush piece, presets and just make sure that everything is as we like it to be. So at the moment, um, I'm on shape. I've got my um, brush tool set to shape dynamics, and when I click in uh, shape dynamics, you'll see that actually I've collected the pen pressure as the way I'd like uh, for the pen to work. And what that means is it gives it a nice kind of line where, whereby it starts smaller, becomes bigger, and then starts smaller again. And I think that works particularly well with this type of thing. Make sure that you have your color set to white before you do anything else. So just check that these settings are kind of okay. I haven't got anything on there. My brush is set to 27, and I've got 1% of spacing on just to give it a bit of a ruggedy edge. Uh, you then need to click onto your Paths box. Again, you'll find your Path box in Windows. So open up your Paths palette. Uh, click on the side here. Make sure that your path is selected, like so. Click on your path and then go to Stroke Path. So basically, we just want to add a stroke to the path that we've created. We want to make sure that we're using the presets that we've just set up on the brush tool here. So make sure that the brush tool is selected, click on simulate pressure to make sure that the pressure of the brush is selected and then go OK. And then you'll have the beginnings of your kind of light swirl effect starting to appear. So what's going to happen next is we are going to work with the layer blending modes and add a nice outer glow to this image. And the, the way that we do that on the top, making sure that we're on the right layer, we add uh, click on here to find the drop down menu, go to blending options and then we want to tick on the outer glow option. So tick on the outer glow and in here we're going to have to have a play around with the settings. I normally just go to normal on the um, blending mode. Um, opacity is fine to leave on 75. I wouldn't add any noise. I'm going to add mine to make it blue because I'm not happy with the colour. So I'm just going to add blue to mine, so I think that gives quite a nice effect. Um, make sure that you're set to softer on the technique. And then really, the key thing then is about the size and the spread. So you can have a little look and see uh, how what impact that has. 
I'm maybe going to kind of like add the spread up to sort of like 14 because that gives a little bit more of an outer glow. And then I'm going to move this in. Uh, add this in. This uh, Change the size here. And it's up to you how you like to have your um, swirls, whether or not you like them to be really kind of blurry, like so, or whether you like them to be less blurry. I'm kind of going to go with maybe around the 40 to 46 mark for mine. Make sure your contour's like this. Uh, you want your range to be on 50. Again, it's up to you to how how much you want to add on there or take away. Might add a little bit more just to take off some of that edge on that um, on the sizing. So once that's done, that's brilliant. The next thing that you want to do is add an inner uh, inner glow. Sorry. Again, clicking on the inner glow will bit bring up the dialog box and the settings that you want to try for this. Uh, just again blending to normal but it's up to you you can try some of the different options opacity on 75 is quite good again I'm going to go with blue again on the inside so try and get the same sort of color on the inside um, we want to make sure that we have the technique on softer and the uh, source chosen as edge again and then we are going to add in a little bit more on the size factor Obviously, you don't want to lose the white because the white part is the bit that really gives the glow. So don't add too much in a glow because the white is what makes it pop from the background. So just add a little bit of inner glow there. Again, if you want to try a different colour, you can. That's up to you if you want to try and get a different effect. Um, once you've checked all that and you've got your contour and your ranges on 50, click on OK. Um, and we now have this kind of like nice layer affected. The next thing that we're going to do is just um, create a new layer and then again with the pen tool selected, again I'm on freeform pen tool, I'm just going to sort of maybe add in a few more lines on the new layer, just kind of like fairly near where the lines are that I've already created, don't have to be exactly where they are and the idea is that we're going to set up a kind of a, a smaller set of lines that kind of give the effect of a ghostly effect that maybe a slightly more movement going on within the image so again we want to add in the brush dynamics make sure they're all the same I'm just going to stick to the same make sure that's set on white and then the same thing to do is to go to the path click on stroke path uh, make sure it's brush simulate the pressure click on OK and you'll have a new path appearing. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the opacity down on that path uh, and I'm also going to add in um, a bit of a Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to go down Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur and then you can obviously see as you're going and you can see on mine here, look, that this adds just another wispy effect. It's up to you again how wispy you want to make that, whether or not you make it quite clear or whether you make it quite blurry. So I'm going to make mine relatively blurry to just give another kind of background effect. Click on OK and that's done. Um, you then want to create a new layer. So again, new layer. And this time we're going to add a layer of kind of a very small layer of sparkles. So we are going to collect the brush tool, make sure it's on white again or you can change the colour if you want to. But this time, in the brush presets, we're going to add some different effects. So the things that you want to look for, um, just check on the size, whether or not you're happy with the size. I think I'm going to go around this sort of size. Might make it a little bit bigger. It's up to you again. Uh, the key one here is to add on some spacing. So you want to space out your um, marks from your brush. And you'll see why in a minute. Because when you go to scattering, if you then select the scattering and drag this up, you then scattering out your brush and what happens then is that you get this interesting kind of sort of um, oh, where was it? there is effect occurring and you can see this here in that you get your little um, ball starting to kind of drag out a little bit so again it's up to you how you do that but you can see on the scattering I've got mine on quite a high number and I've got the um, I've got the size jitter up to what a hundred percent because what that means is it makes some bigger than others on your little what little dots, 
and then I've got the spacing up relatively high as well and not to worry because you are on a new layer so if it doesn't work don't panic about that and again I'm just going to sort of follow around some of the parts I'm not going to complete them all because I don't want all of the sections um, to have the little dots on but I'm just maybe going to add in a few uh, and what you can do is just dot one or two around and it will just dot some smaller and bigger and that's just giving the effect that the kind of like line is almost alive and adding kind of um, a little kind of effect to it which is quite nice uh, once you've done that you probably don't want these to be too in your face so I'm probably going to take those down a bit but I'm going to add some layer blending modes to those as well so I'm going to go to the layer blending options do a bit of um, oops, not that one inner glow and outer glow again probably with the same kind of color but like I said you can uh, have a play around with those settings yourself so hopefully by now you should be getting used to it a little bit because you've had a little go on this already again I'm going to set mine to normal so that I can actually see the effect of that on the little dots uh, same thing for the outer glow make sure that it's set on the blue and I'm going to give quite a little bit more on the spread oops spread there and then size just kind of give it that glowing edge which is what I feel kind of helps to give it the impression that it's actually a bit supernatural uh, and once I've got that done as blurry as I kind of want it not really sure how to go with this uh, I'm just going to click on OK and then probably in the uh, opacity I'll take that down a bit because I don't want it too bright just maybe a little bit kind of in the background like so but you can have them brighter or s smaller or whatever you feel uh, and then what you need to do is just to go back to your layers that had the paths in because you want to delete those paths so you just click on the layer and press delete and then one final quite nice thing that you can do is you can actually go to um, your background layer and um, change the hue and the saturation so you, um, if you had a coloured image you might want to go to hue saturation like this and press on colorize and then you can colorize your image or even if it's black and white and what you can do then is make it all one color so I think I'm going to give it a blue tint to work with the blue kind of sparkly effect that's the kind of thing we're after and then once that's done we now have a kind of interesting light painting effect um, that we've created ourselves on Adobe um, Photoshop in the same way that you might use um, a camera and a slow shutter speed with a torch or some glow sticks or one of those laser pens. So I think that's quite effective um, and hopefully not too difficult a tutorial.